Um, so I, I more internalised my anger and just take it out on myself. The other day, got in a huff with somebody in a call centre, threw myself down on my bed. My bed's made of metal. The frame went right into the back of my leg. I've got a six inch long bruise, which Ooh. looks a bit like a slug. This is so often the way with the huff, you see. You think you're teaching the other person a lesson. It's Ooh. you that ends up suffering. In the case of Harry, his car, he blocked off the uh, lane. No one else could get up or down. He'd lost his keys. Don't worry, I found them. That, obviously, that whole <laughs> situation obviously really upset Harry, because as he started telling that story, tossed his penis. Furious, yeah, absolutely yeah. furious. It, it stays in you. Uh, I'm trying to think of my own uh, Huff anecdotes. I'm sure I'll come up with some, but in the meantime, uh, if you have something at home that you would love to tell us uh, in order to give us something to talk about in the next 15 minutes, then we would appreciate that you can get in touch. Text us on 64046 or email stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. Tales of truly great Huffs is what we're after. <laughs> The new album, Attack and Release, that's the Black Keys, and I got mine. We'll have a musical choice from Rufus after this. Adam Six Music. It's a Steve Show, Six Music with me, Steve Merchant, and my gang. Uh, we're talking about uh, great strops and huffs that we've had where we've stormed off, perhaps uh, not really justified. Uh, Rufus has been whinging about a tie pin. I mean, for mm. goodness sake, <laughs> there's starvation and famine in the world, yeah. and he's worrying about that. Put things in perspective, man. Yeah, it would have been a different tie pin, though, wouldn't it? You, you know as well as I do. It would have been a different yeah, type, in. A different yeah. type in. Uh, Are people storming out of the theatre in a huff themselves? So <laughs> angered are they by your... Uh... We've had a couple of walkouts, yeah. <laughs> sure. All I heard was, wouldn't have been wearing the same type <laughs> in nine years later. <laughs> Wallace would have given him a new one. Yeah, true. Um, we, 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 you know, I mean, I'm not allowed to do it, but uh, if you wanted to remind people where your play was on... Yeah, I could, if I wanted to. Uh, uh, www.crownmatrimonial.com uh, Appearing in the Theatre Royal Bath all this week and Bromley and Richmond the following two weeks. They're also more than Brighton and Salford. If you if you want to see Rufus in the flesh, then uh, you could go along to one of those venues. I cannot obviously endorse that, being a BBC employee. Uh, there are many other plays <laughs> <are> available <laughs> for your entertainment pleasure. Um, yeah. Rufus, a musical choice from you? Uh, I've selected uh, another slight Father's Day choice. It's a classic Northern Soul song uh, in Dan's absence. I know a bit of funk and soul will cheer him up. Uh, and this is for my dad. It's 25 Miles by Edwin Starr. Thank you very much. a fantastic choice Rufus what was it it was 25 miles by Edwin Starr I should say as well that 25 miles is the approximate distance I've travelled this week in a replacement bus service because <laughs> the Victoria line is down and it will be to November which is making me huff big time are you going to are you going to storm off now and huff I, I might I've been I'm just storming out of rooms all over the all yeah. over England at the moment because the Victoria line is down you could actually thing. wheel one of those uh, prop doors behind you and endlessly <laughs> storm off through it and then carry on pushing it down the road it's fantastic That's what I feel like doing I'm that huffy I remember um, having a huff when I was a kid uh, I was probably probably about uh, eight or nine, and a lot of um, people were over at the house, it was Christmas time, a lot of other kids from other parents, and we were all having a great time in my bedroom, you know, watching TV and, you know, generally pillow fighting, whatever happens when you're a kid, and then uh, I said, right, it's bedtime now, come on, it's bedtime, I'm tired, it's bedtime, <laughs> clap my hands, come on, sleep, so, so I tried to make everyone go to sleep, right, right I know, eight other kids, so we're sort of lying there, and I'm trying to sleep, you know, I'm tired, and, um, and uh, my tartrazine fix has obviously worn off, so now, it, it might, you know, so I try to sleep, and uh, all the kids are talking, you know, and they're sort of still mucking around and chatting. I was like, come on, come on, we're trying to sleep, come on. And eventually, uh, none of them would shout, they got louder and louder, they sort of basically woke up again and carried on playing. I said, right, forget it, okay, I'm sleeping in the other room. And I stormed out, and I stormed into my parents' room, and I sat in there, lying in the bed, like, ha, that'll teach them. And I lay there, I could just hear them having the most amazing time next door. <laughs> it was like, some, it was like, so suddenly, it, in my head, it'd become an amazing wonderland, probably like, Michael Jackson's Neverland before it went bad <laughs> you know just kind of it sounded like they were having you know ring a ring of roses was going on and they were they were playing with you know I don't know stickleback bricks what are they called what are they stickle, bricks. stickle bricks stickle bricks <laughs> stickle stickle <laughs> maybe they had some sticklebacks they might well have had some sticklebacks as well uh, it was just like party time but and I, the whole time I was thinking I'm missing out I'm missing out what was I thinking it's Christmas I don't have to go to school I can stay up what am I thinking but obviously did not want to go back in um, embarrass myself by uh, calling back in so I just had to lie there for hours oh. listening to the fun that was going on um, you know it just was oh so even now I, I, actually that's one of the reasons I think that I always try and go to everything that I'm invited to, fearful of missing out on some great night, uh, having had my lesson uh, learnt there. But if you have um, uh, an interesting huff story that you can uh, share with us, then get in touch. I love pressing this button. Text us on 64046 or email stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. Yeah, well, a uh, long-time friend of the show, Hannah, has emailed in. Uh, she says when her brother was about 10, he didn't want to go swimming, uh, so he had a big huff. 
uh, decided to run away, planned it all out very well. <laughs> run uh, away from home? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, he got one of those uh, harvest oat bars and a box of raisins and hid in the alleyway by the side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, that yeah. was it. And how long was he gone for? Uh, not long, because uh, the parents still made him go to his swimming lesson. <laughs> so that was brilliant. Oh, quickly. that's a whole other subset of when huffs go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when you completely fail to achieve whatever it was you were trying to do uh, in your huff. I've had a couple of texts from my own mother, actually, straight <laughs> on my direct line. One saying, it was not two weeks, Sammy, it was a day. So my father actually stopped speaking to me for a day. I was two, a day is long. It, it felt like two, like two weeks. Yeah. weeks. She also texted me to say, do you remember the massive huff you had? Oh, when your dad claimed to use magic when playing frustration <laughs> to get sixes in a row, and he was getting sixes in a row, so I still think he was using witchcraft, <laughs> and I actually called the police. <laughs> called the police? <laughs> the police. Now, I don't know what the f- game frustration is. What is that? It's like a poppy dice in the middle of a game board, so you press it down. It's like in an enclosed little dome. Okay, yeah. And then, if you get six, obviously, you're more likely to win, and he kept getting sixes, but he was whispering to it and tickling it with his fingers, all oh, magic sixes, and I was getting so angry. So I called 999 you and called so my dad was cheating frustration using magic. Well, hang on, I just need, you need to, to walk me through this. So did your parents know that you'd gone off to the telephone? I, I was in the room with them. I think they were just so weak with laughing. They didn't actually think I'd know how to. So you dialed 999 it. service, do you need police fire? Then the phone police. was wrenched out of my hands while I tried to say, my dad's cheating in frustration. And right. they told me that that was the wrong way to go about it. And I was a sore loser. Um, and so to this day, you don't know if it was just good fortune or black magic? I still probably believe it was black magic. My dad is a mysterious man. I've seen a picture of him, I'll have to agree. <laughs> Talking heads, this must be the place on the Steve Show BBC Six Music. We were asking for your stories about huffery and the great huffs that you've enjoyed. Rufus, you got some? Uh, David's texted in on 64046, says, I put a hammer through my CD player as I kept skipping. I think he means it kept skipping. <laughs> <laughs> um, had to buy a new one and replace my copy of LA Woman by the Doors. Uh, I was going to make a gag about I put a hammer through LA Woman by the Doors because it was rotten and I was just cross. It didn't get any better every time I looked at <laughs> <Sure. to> it. <laughs> Sammy? A really quite fantastic huff from Tim and Harlow. Stood on the brakes with my wife and seven-year-old son in the car on the dual carriageway into Disneyland in Paris. Got out of the car, left it in the middle of the road and stormed off. This was over setting off late, 11am. My son was in tears and his plea was that it was like Emmerdale. (laughs) <laughs> it was like an episode of Emmerdale. And that stopped the row. Wow. And an easy truce prevailed. That's amazing. How old was the kid? Seven. I love the idea that just they're screaming at each other. Well, I wanted to leave at nine. <laughs> you know, they're never, never going to get there. They're going to be together. Emmerdale! <laughs> <laughs> that would be extraordinary. It's just like Emmerdale. There you are. If, you, if you're a child listening and your parents are having an argument, maybe they're on the brink of divorce, just scream out Emmerdale and everything will be okay. Uh, well, hopefully I'll have some more of those after the news. Back in a sec. On digital. Flaming Lips, do you realise, on the Steve Show, BBC Six Music with me, Steve Merchant. Uh, my little gang here, and we've been asking for your stories of uh, great huffs that you've endured, experienced. Um, and uh, Rufus, you got one there? I've got uh, one from Neil in Scotland who's texted in. Uh, he says, Hi Steve, hi gang. When I was in school, I was in a band. It was one of those school bands which were all out aspirations of success. I was the drummer, we were practicing school one day, and I felt we were having musical differences, so I stormed out of the room. But not having the courage to go too far, I simply waited outside. After a while, I heard the band start up again with a full drum sound. I thought, That's weird, I've been replaced. When I walked in, I saw the janitor had taken my place, and he was brilliant. <laughs> so if anyone wants a drummer, I'm available. Wow, <laughs> the janitor. Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. And that band's name yes, yeah, yeah. was the Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's extraordinary. So what's his name? Uh, Neil in Scotland. Neil, if you need a drummer, if you're up in Scotland and you need a drummer um, who's not as good as a man who's on yeah. three pounds twelve an hour, then here's your guy. And uh, Sammy. Uh, this one's from Susan Windsor. I had a massive huff at my housemates for waking me up one morning. I went mad, shouting about respecting me and my peace and quiet. Only then to find out that the noise they were making was sorting out a surprise party for me to thank me for being so lovely and helping them all so much. I felt horrible. That's brilliant. No, that's great. And I hope they didn't explain that surprise party to teach her a valuable lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Dale! I'm going to shout that if there's a problem with this show. In future. <laughs> Emma Dale! <laughs> um, young child huffs are often the best huffs yeah. uh, Emily in London when I was three I decided to run away early one morning before everyone woke up to teach my parents a lesson for not taking the stabilizers off my bike <laughs> I got halfway down the road when my dad came chasing after me because I'd forgot to put my knickers on <laughs> hey <laughs> <Classic>. <laughs> oh fantastic um, okay well listen 
will uh, keep uh, dipping into those, um, but we need to get into our uh, review section. This is something that uh, no one looks forward to on the show, but we do it anyway because <laughs> it fills up time. Uh, we take a taster of uh, three new tracks that have uh, found their way to the pigeonhole. This one, Tricky, is back, and here's Council Estate. The album No West Boy is out on July 7th, and that's the single June the 30th it's released, and it's tricky. Council Estate, Steve Show, BBC Six Music, we're delving into the pigeonhole, uh, giving our opinion of three new tracks. And um, we welcome back recently the triumphant return of Portishead. I know that got the thumbs up here on the show. Um, obviously, uh, someone else who was very big during the uh, Bristol trip-hop scene of the uh, early 90s was Tricky. Um, where does he fare nowadays, Sammy? Um not au fait with early Tricky. You're saying he's out around 92. I was about six. So it wasn't, you know, really That's when you were phoning me. the police. That's when I was phoning the police and listening to Jason Donovan. Um, but I really liked that. And it's not, that isn't sort of my kind of music, but it was brilliant. I loved the use of the real drums and they were used to great effect. And it was just, I don't know, it was quite exciting and I want to listen to it again. I want to drive to it. I think it might make me feel empowered. I enjoyed it. Good. Well, I'm very pleased to see that uh, Bristol Boy Tricky has won you over. Um, you're, of course, uh, well, you know, essentially raised in Bristol. Mm. Not actually a native Bristolian, but we won't hold that against you. Uh, Harry, uh, obviously very proud of the whole trip-hop scene. Oh, enormously. Um, enormously. Yeah, you know, uh, we were all hanging out, weren't we, uh, down, uh, down Ritz's, the lot of us. <laughs> exactly. Me, you, uh, 3D. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, no, I really enjoyed that. I, I can't say I was the biggest Tricky fan. Um, I read a really interesting article with him uh, not so long ago and he was saying he sort of the latest album is kind of rebelling ab about how his music became sort of coffee table music yeah. and then he went out and had a, like a really sort of extreme album and this is kind of a continuation of that and yeah yeah I really enjoyed that it was pretty harsh pretty enjoyable um, Rufus you obviously very much down with the kids we know that mm -hmm. you're very street um, will that be being played in the dressing room during your current it uh, might be, just after I've played a bit of uh, Elgar's and Nimrod <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. uh, it's nice to hear a song about my childhood again you know, yes the quite. rough times the council state being kicked and punched by the filth <laughs> 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 uh, no I really enjoyed that it reminded me of the William Blake poem actually my mother cried my father wept into the dangerous world I leapt uh, oh, there seemed oh. to be a <laughs> there seemed to be a, a, a kind of real feel of what it was like to be thrust into the world at 100 miles an hour and to kind of live at that speed and the song seemed to go at that speed and I liked it very much I thought that was a fantastic review a round of applause please um, we'll have a new one from Dizzy Rascal featuring Calvin Harris after this BBC Six Music and dance with me also released on June the 30th, like Tricky. That's Dizzy Rascal and Calvin Harris and Dance With Me. Steve Show, we're just delving into the pigeonhole, giving our verdict. I'll start with you, Rufus. You are, as I've already pointed out, pretty straight. You uh, say that uh, frequently when yes. we say that, and the audience need reminding because they might think I'm just some super posh, you know, fool. Well, no. you quoted William Blake uh, earlier, so yeah. people would say, maybe you're a ponce, maybe but no. Maybe I am, maybe mm. I am. I like that very much. Sammy and I were saying how um, you can always tell when it's Dizzy, and there's a, there's a, he's, got a fantastic, he's got a fantastic delivery, almost impeccable flow. Well, hang on. A minute. Well, I'm Hang interested on. to know that because you know my opinion. Yep. You know what LL Cool J thinks of me. Your What's flow's that? impeccable. That's what LL Cool J thinks you, of me. Yeah. yeah, no way, absolutely. Yeah, really. Yeah, so I mean, um, you know, he, he thinks his style, <laughs> well, he thinks. So, you yeah. know, he, uh, the, well, there's a big culture on this show of people giving strong verdicts about people's flow. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You're saying that you really respect Dizzy's I'm gonna flow. Go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match LL's opinion of your flow and say that I think Dizzy's flow is inscrutable. Really? Wow. I think it's a cracking song. And uh, it, it kind of let me in in a way that a lot of grime sounds don't. I found very I, I feel very excluded from a lot of that kind of music. But um, this was a, there was a real kind of narrative and a real kind of punch to it that I really liked. Good. Well, thank you very much. There's been some very eloquent reviews from uh, from uh, Rufus today. Um, Sammy, I'm wondering, are you going to offer the same kind of eloquence? If a day spent naked on a trampoline eating cake with M Ewan McGregor was at one end of a scale, that song was at the other. Ooh, I don't know which is best. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bear the idea of being on a trampoline you, with Ewan McGregor. I can assure you, left hand is the happy place. Right Ooh. hand, not a happy place. That is Ewan naked as well? 